Hello everyone, this is Pratima and welcome to the Experimental Physiology Practical Series on Planet Physiology. Today we shall explore a fundamental concept in cardiac physiology, the all or none law. This principle is crucial for understanding how the heart contracts efficiently to pump the blood throughout the body. First let us know what is all or none law. It is the property of excitable tissues like nerve and muscle. It states that under the given conditions, when the stimulus is adequate, the tissue responds to its maximum, that is all phenomenon, and when the stimulus is inadequate, the tissue does not respond at all, which is none phenomenon. Adequate stimulus is nothing but the threshold stimulus. It is defined as the minimum strength of the stimulus that elicits response from the tissue. Any strength below the threshold is termed as sub-threshold stimulus and it does not elicit any response from the tissue. Whereas all the strengths above the threshold are supra-threshold stimuli. With this background knowledge, let us begin with the demonstration. But before proceeding, please pause the video and read the disclaimer. Okay. For this demonstration, we dissect the heart as usual. Ventricle is attached to the starling's heart lever and mid-atrial ligature is applied. Due to application of this ligature, ventricle stops contracting. Now the electrode is lightly touched to the ventricle. To prove the property of all or none law, we should stimulate the ventricle with a single stimulus at a time by varying their intensities. And hence, we use the basic circuit with battery, primary coil, tap key and EMTM in primary circuit. The secondary coil, secondary key and electrodes are in secondary circuit. In this experiment, induction coil plays very important role to decide the strength of the stimulus. As name suggests, it works on the principle of induced current. When the tap key is pressed, the current flows in the primary coil in a circular fashion and develops magnetic field around it. Change in the magnetic field induces current in the secondary coil and the stimulus is delivered to the tissue. This stimulus is called as make stimulus or make shock as it is due to making of the circuit. When we release the tap key, current flow in the primary coil stops and the magnetic field is lost. At this point, again, the current is induced in the secondary coil and a stimulus is delivered to the tissue. This stimulus is called brake shock. The strength of the induced current depends on the distance and the angle between primary and secondary coil. Lesser the distance, stronger is the stimulus. When the coils are parallel, current strength is maximum at the given distance. If the coils are perpendicular, no current is induced in the secondary coil. Ok, once the setup is ready, secondary coil is moved to the maximum distance. That means, we start the experiment with the minimum strength of the stimulus and the ventricle is stimulated by make shock and then by the brake shock. Downstroke of EMTM tracing indicates delivery of make shock whereas upstroke indicates brake shock. We always wait for 30 seconds before the application of the next stimulus. Lower tracing is of cardiac activity, which shows a straight line indicating that both the make as well as brake stimulus failed to elicit response from the ventricle. The same procedure is repeated each time by reducing the distance between primary and secondary coil by 1 cm. So with this basic knowledge, now you can easily follow the demonstration. So chymograph is set into the motion at low speed and make shock is delivered. There is no response by the ventricle. After 30 seconds, brake shock is delivered and again there is no response. Now we move the secondary coil closer to the primary coil by 1 cm. And again deliver make shock. And 30 seconds later, the brake shock. At this distance also, both the make 
as well as brake stimulus are ineffective once again the distance between primary and secondary coil is reduced by 1 cm and make shock was given there is no response but as you can note brake shock has elicited the response in the form of ventricular contraction again the distance is reduced by 1 cm and again deliver make shock and 30 seconds later the brake shock and here also we got the response only for brake same procedure is repeated by further reducing the distance and at this point we got the response for make as well as for brake shock one more time the distance was reduced by 1 cm and again we got the response for make as well as brake stimulus let's see how to interpret this graph vertical dotted lines in blue represent make stimulus and yellow represent brake stimulus so m for make and b for brake all these initial stimuli which fail to elicit response are called as sub threshold stimuli the stimulus at which first response was obtained is threshold stimulus so this is the minimum strength of the stimulus required to elicit the response usually we note the distance between the primary and secondary coils on the drum and threshold stimulus is expressed in terms of this distance say in this case 19 cm break is the threshold strength because we have got response for the break stimulus when the distance between primary and secondary coil was 19 cm all the stimuli above the threshold are supra threshold stimuli you can note that height of all these contractions are same it indicates that when the stimulus is threshold or supra threshold of any intensity muscle contracts with the maximum force thus we have proven the property of all or none law in cardiac muscle okay let's discuss the significance of this property as we already know cardiac muscles possess gap junctions and hence all or none law is obeyed by the cardiac muscles as a whole that is by the syncytium both the atrial as well as ventricular syncytium this ensures that for every adequate stimulus cardiac muscle contracts as a single unit with uniform force which helps to maintain the adequate stroke volume and hence the cardiac output at the same time weaker or sub threshold stimuli do not initiate muscle contraction and save the energy thus due to all or none property heart can maintain consistent and strong contractions to support the body's need understanding all or none law is not just academic it's clinically important as well for example in certain conditions abnormal stimuli can cause inappropriate or uncoordinated contractions leading to arrhythmias and the treatments often aim to stabilize the threshold level to ensure that only appropriate stimuli cause the heart to contract here are some thought questions for you why do we get threshold at break and not at make shock why should we wait for 30 seconds between the stimuli and how all or none law in cardiac muscle differs from that of skeletal muscles post your answers in the comment section below and that's all for this session thank you for joining in and see you in the next video are you new to my channel then please subscribe it and press the bell icon to stay updated about the new releases if you like the video Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for joining in and see you in the next video.